Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about a relatively recent and somewhat interesting research in regards to nuking asteroids. We're essentially trying to detonate a nuclear bomb right next to the asteroid in order to redirect it from the potential collision with planet Earth. And all of this is based on the recent research coming out of the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in the US that was able to simulate five different asteroids with five different scenarios in order to find out if we could potentially use nuclear weapons as the last resort if no other technique works in order to redirect an asteroid. And this is of course assuming a scenario where we discover an asteroid that's going to be most likely colliding with planet Earth and has an extremely high potential to cause a lot of destruction on the planet. But in this case the scientists only took a look at somewhat smaller asteroids approximately 100 to maybe 500 meters in size. The types of asteroids that are still very difficult for us to find and that we believe are the most hidden asteroids out there. And although this is obviously much much smaller than the so-called asteroid killers, which are anywhere from 5 to maybe even 10 kilometers across, or basically at least 10 times bigger, these small rocks are actually a lot more dangerous for us right now for two main reasons. One is that we haven't really found a lot of them out there, but we know that a lot of them do exist. And the second reason is, well, the fact that we know that from all of the major so-called air bolides that happened in the last few hundreds of years, including the famous bolide that created the Tunguska event, all of these rocks were relatively similar in size, anywhere from 50 to maybe a few hundred meters across. And so that's really the asteroids that we are most concerned about right now. And although these big rocks like the asteroid banner right here are obviously even more dangerous, because they're so much easier to find and we've discovered most likely 99.9% .9 of all of them, while also determining their orbits extremely accurately and knowing exactly where they're going to be in the next few hundred years. For the next few hundreds of years, these bigger asteroids are not really a hazard to us, but the asteroids similar to the one that caused the Nguska event could unfortunately happen anytime. And this is why a lot of scientists today are focusing on trying to identify, first of all, how to find them much easier, and second of all, find techniques that would allow us to somehow redirect the asteroid before it hits planet Earth. But luckily for us, this recent research seems to give us a little bit more hope. Well, first let's start right here. You might have seen this map before. This is the map created by NASA showing us approximately 20 years of various air bolide explosions that occurred somewhere on planet Earth between 1994 and 2013. And the bigger the circle, the more explosive the event was. Now notice how there are quite a lot of various large circles across the planet, which means that there are quite a lot of air bolide collisions creating explosions that could be equivalent to a typical nuclear bomb. But we don't really hear much about them. And the reason for this is because despite the large amount of asteroids hitting the planet, the majority happen in very remote locations, usually somewhere above the ocean. And none of these rocks even reach the surface, they don't actually even hit the water. They all end up disintegrating in the atmosphere and creating a really large explosion in the upper atmosphere. And so because of this, they're actually really easy to miss. But they do happen quite a lot, and because all of this is essentially statistics, at some point there's always a chance that one of these rocks is going to explode above a major city. And technically it has in 2013. There was a meteor explosion above Chelyabinsk, but luckily it wasn't really as damaging as it could have been. And because so many of these smaller asteroids are being discovered pretty much every single day, with various government programs discovering over a million asteroids already, it's only a matter of time before we find this type of an asteroid that does have a really high chance of a potential collision with planet Earth in just a few years. I mean, this is just pure statistics here. And so what exactly do we do if we do find an asteroid that's approximately 100 meters across that's almost certainly going to collide with the planet in let's just say 6 months to maybe 1 year? And so that's where the idea of the so-called asteroid impact avoidance comes into play. There are quite a lot of techniques that have been proposed over the years to try to deflect it from its actual orbit, in order for it to basically miss planet Earth by just a little bit. For example, one of the propositions is placing a tiny probe in orbit around the asteroid that despite its relatively small size and mass is going to pull the asteroid just enough over time and nudge it in just the right direction forcing it to move a little bit to the side and thus miss planet Earth. But this would require years and years of orbiting around the asteroid, which means that we would have to find such an asteroid a few years before it collided with planet Earth. 
Another potential proposition is to launch something relatively fast moving and hit the asteroid in just the right location in order to once again nudge it in a certain direction. These images you see right here were from the 2005 mission known as Deep Impact and this is when the NASA's Deep Impact probe collided with a relatively large comet known as Temple 1. And though this collision was not actually meant to redirect the comet, it was mostly used to study the structural composition of this comet, it did end up producing just a little bit of thrust and changed the velocity of the comet by like 0.00001 millimeters per second, which changed its orbit by about 10 meters. And considering the size of this object, this is actually quite impressive. And so if we were to collide a similar probe at a similar speed with a much smaller asteroid, because of the mass difference, the impact on velocity and the change of orbit would very likely be in kilometers, if not hundreds of kilometers. And so redirecting asteroids using this technique is something the scientists believe would definitely work. But it still requires us to find these rocks possibly months, if not years ahead. Actually, the sooner we find them, the better. But this is not particularly realistic right now. And there are obviously a lot more different techniques and a lot more different propositions. For example, using the solar radiation to try to heat up the asteroid, creating a kind of a jet propulsion from the asteroid itself. So this would definitely work as well. But once again, this would require at least a few months preparation and possibly even a few years. And so what exactly do we do if we discover an asteroid that's only about six months away from the collision with planet Earth or possibly even a few weeks away? Well, naturally, this is where we have possibly only one solution, some sort of a nuclear detonation, either on the surface or right above the surface of the asteroid. With the optimal detonation height being completely dependent on the composition and the size of the object. For some asteroids, it might be better to detonate it above the asteroid. For others, you might want to collide with the asteroid first before detonating the bomb. But unlike the movies from a few decades ago that showed us the complete destruction of the asteroid, that's really not what happens here at all. As a matter of fact, we don't want to disintegrate the asteroid. We want to only nudge it. We want to move it just enough for it not to hit planet Earth. As a matter of fact, if you vaporize the asteroid, what you're going to get is a huge superheated gas that's also radioactive coming toward planet Earth and hitting the entire atmosphere of the planet from a lot of different directions. And that's actually a lot worse than just a single rock hitting the surface. And so instead, the typical nuclear detonation uses a lot of x-rays and a lot of neutrons, which generally do not penetrate matter really well, to hit the surface of the asteroid and turn the thermal heat into fizzing heated ejecta that sort of acts like a rocket engine, propelling the asteroid in the opposite direction. And so this is exactly what the scientists behind this recent study decided to do. They used computer simulations to study what's known as the late-time small body disruption. Or in other words, the detonation of a nuclear bomb on an asteroid that's going to collide with the planet anywhere from a few weeks to maybe six months in the future. With the main discovery here being that it's actually extremely effective, even if the asteroid is only a couple of months away from hitting the planet. In this case, they used a nuclear bomb that's about one megaton in power and simulated the detonation on five separate asteroids that were going to hit planet Earth anywhere from one week to about six months in the future with the biggest challenge of the simulation being the number of particles. Mostly because they would have to simulate the orbit of every one of these fragments as it separates from the asteroid and as it starts traveling across the solar system. But they discovered that even if you hit the asteroid about two months before it hits planet Earth, only about 0.1% of the entire mass of the asteroid ends up hitting the planet. The rest dissipates across the solar system. Although for bigger rocks, such as the asteroids that would be closer to asteroid Bano, you would still have to try to do this a little bit earlier. If you were to do this about six months beforehand, only about 1% of the entire mass is going to hit the planet, which means that most of the mass, 99% of the mass, is going to dissipate across the solar system. And by the way, to simulate all of this, they use the software known as Spherel. You can learn a little bit more about this in the link in the description below. And so by using the software, they've provided enough evidence to suggest that nuclear detonation can definitely help us as a last resort. Although naturally, you still would have to calculate exactly where to hit the asteroid and at what depth as well. 
all of this still requires a lot of complex calculations. Nevertheless, this is definitely some of the better news we have in regards to potential collisions with asteroids, which many scientists really believe is one of the biggest existential threats to modern civilization. But as the scientists mentioned, this is still the last resort. As the first resort, we would still want to use some sort of an impactor or some other method that doesn't involve nuclear weapons. With this mission known as DART, or Double Asteroid Redirection Test, that's going to begin in just about a month from when I'm making this video, potentially being one of the most important scientific missions in the next few years. It's going to use a probe to collide into the asteroid in order to establish by how much we can potentially nudge an asteroid from its original orbit. But we'll talk more about this in one of the future videos, or you can also check out one of the older videos somewhere on the channel. Anyway, on that note, well, definitely good news, definitely exciting, and definitely something to look forward to once the scientists do a little bit more analysis and a few more simulations to establish how viable this particular technique is. Until we discover more, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out all the links in the description below, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.